Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-2901. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Because of the extra-dimensional properties related to SCP-2901, there are currently no methods of physical containment. Case reports involving SCP-2901 will be remitted to Mobile Task Force 55, Twilighters, for further investigation. Civilian sightings of SCP-2901 will be suppressed using amnestic field applications. Media leaks regarding SCP-2901 will be deleted or discredited by the Information Detraction, Censorship, and Rescission Division ID card. Field personnel should avoid SCP-2901 if at all possible. Those authorized to investigate SCP-2901 must carry mobile devices capable of short message services SMS, in case of sudden acoustic cancellation. If a hostile encounter is unavoidable, personnel should adhere to the following steps. Number 1. Do not attempt to run. Fleeing may provoke SCP-2901 to give chase. Number 2. Hold your ground. Be sure to make eye contact. Number 3. Make a threat display, using clothing to imitate an increase in body mass. Number 4. Continue step 3 until SCP-2901 becomes disinterested and submits. Number 5. Avoid physical contact if at all possible. Wield or throw objects to maintain distance. Description. SCP-2901 are a species of nocturnal carnivorous scavengers of limited intelligence, averaging 1.7 meters in height. SCP-2901 usually appear as having an ellipsoid shape and possess two large eyes layered with photophoric tissue. SCP-2901 are covered in a layer of minute iridescent lamellar scales similar to lepidopterans. SCP-2901 are able to move through space-time freely granting them certain abilities such as levitation, flight, and teleportation. SCP-2901 are, however, tangible and susceptible to conventional firearms. SCP-2901 are also able to emit an acoustic cancellation effect within a radius of approximately 25 meters. The purpose or function of this ability is not wholly understood, but it is theorized to aid in stealth. Several methods of containment and or deterrence are still being considered. However, because of the elusiveness of SCP-2901, a large majority of the general public are aware of related incidents and possibly even the existence of SCP-2901. Countermeasures are in place as a temporary solution for protecting information on SCP-2901. Level 2 access required. ID card. Information Detraction, Censorship, and Rescission Division. ID card at scpfoundation.intranet. X7502. Fax7503. Operation. Surgeon's Photograph. Priority. Dalek. Internal use only. Preamble. Due to the uncontainable nature and general notoriety of SCP-2901, certain protocols must be established in order to quell civilian suspicion as to the existence of these entities. The following is an outline of Operations Surgeon's photograph that should be reviewed by your respective teams. Counterintelligence Due to the nature of Operations Surgeon's photograph, information regarding SCP-2901 does not require additional safeguards against espionage. Information about SCP-2901 will remain accessible on the Foundation main list database. Standard protocols for sensitive information, access clearance and storage still apply. Identification of sensitive material Utilizing the automated virtual agents already in place, the certain keywords related to SCP-2901 will be routinely searched and red flagged on the daily reports. Pages will be reviewed by selected teams as they are discovered and remitted to the tactical planning team to determine the severity and next course of action. Disinformation Campaign The tactical planning team will review suspected files or pages and make decisions and recommendations regarding pertinent threats. Dozens of online dummy accounts for media sharing websites are to be created and managed by ID Card's Special Cyberspace Unit. Using these dummy accounts, 
Content regarding the presence and or glorification of SCP-2901 will be made widely available. This is to saturate any shared leaked footage or images with fabricated disinforming content. Content will be developed and published in a variety of mediums related to SCP-2901, including fictional stories, doctored photographic images, visual semi-realistic art, falsified eyewitness interviews, and merchandise. The Foundation Front Company, Studio City Productions, will be contracted to create several low-budget documentaries involving SCP-2901 while including other well-known cryptids from folklore. This will further aid in convincing the general public that the existence of SCP-2901 is highly questionable and in all likelihood impossible to validate. Required Deletions any source material of SCP-2901 deemed too sensitive to be accessible to civilians will also be addressed by the Special Cyberspace Unit. Standard protocols for denial-of-service operations will be carried out to isolate the source. After the source is isolated, efforts will be made to erase the original content. Any information regarding the original poster of the material will then be handed over to Mobile Task Force 55 for further investigation. In all cases, Services will be restored once the material has been erased. Any denial-of-service operations in excess of 24 hours will need to be reported to the Department of External Affairs. Cessation of Operations Operation Surgeon's Photograph will continue until a viable method of containment or deterrent for SCP-2901 is in place. Virtual agents will continue to search for keywords related to SCP-2901 these will be included on the month and reports to be reconciled at the end of the quarter. Content made during Operation Surgeon's photograph will remain accessible. The first official documented incursion of SCP-2901 was near the town of West Virginia, USA in 19... followed by the collapse of... Since then, continuing field observations have concluded that SCP-2901 are an aggressively territorial and solitary species. SCP-2901 normally do not engage or reveal themselves openly to humans and will often retreat or vanish if discovered. Further observations suggest that SCP-2901 are able to approximate the time and location of future disasters with a certain degree of accuracy particularly those resulting in multiple fatalities. This is supported by accounts and reports showing a sudden presence of SCP-2901 within the vicinity of the disaster area, usually within a month or week before it occurs. During this period, many SCP-2901 will claim rights to the area, resulting in altercations with other SCP-2901, sometimes including human bystanders being mistaken as threats. During these aggressive territorial behaviors, SCP-2901 are able to change their physical shape into a large nebulous-like body as a threat display. After the disaster event occurs, the remaining SCP-2901 will take part in feeding off the deceased in a frenzy-like behavior until the food source is depleted, vacating once satiated. Level 4 access required. ID card. Information Detraction, Censorship, and Rescission Division. ID card at scpfoundation.intranet. X7502. Fax7503. Confidential. Priority. Gimmel. Directive. Operation Surgeon's Photograph is to be considered the special containment procedures for SCP-2901 and is to operate under the guise of an active public disinformation campaign. Mobile Task Force 55 will be responsible for its continuation and level of effectivity in maintaining acceptable levels of public awareness and conception. As a point of clarification, the purpose of Operation Surgeon's Photograph is not to protect information on SCP-2901, but rather control information on SCP-2901. Summary SCP-2901's current evolution is the sum of Foundation's efforts in manipulating its existence through public perception. 
SCP-2901 are a group of extra-dimensional entities that lack a stable, cohesive form and purpose that only coalesces through continued observational reconciliation. For SCP-2901 to maintain a stable physical mass, approximately 75% of the nearby human populace within 500 kilometers need to be congruent on a singular concept of what SCP-2901 is and what it does. SCP-2901 were first discovered and categorized as highly unstable cataclass entities capable of producing localized CK-class scenarios at random. Further research into SCP-2901's unstable manifestation proved to be futile, as unbeknownst to Foundation scientists at the time, SCP-2901 would involuntarily change during each subsequent observation. During a containment breach into the civilian populated areas within the Appalachian region of the southern United States, SCP-2901 began gradually condensing into a singular manifestation the more it was exposed to humans. Civilians began conceding to the idea that SCP-2901 was a dark winged like humanoid with large red eyes, which corresponded to the pre-existing local folklore. SCP-2901 also began to evolve predatory-like behaviors and anomalous acoustic effects that conceptualized due to the mass fear generated within the surrounding communities. Foundation researchers recognized the effects and began isolating SCP-2901 as much as possible. However, deprived of regular perceptual input, SCP-2901 began to devolve into its initial highly unstable manifestations once again. The decision was made to maintain SCP-2901 in a functioning, manageable state through continued exposure to human perceptual belief that SCP-2901 is a tangible creature of local folklore, another Bigfoot or Loch Ness Monster. The nearby Silver Bridge collapse of 1967 and the SCP-2901 Appalachian incursion in reality have no connection with one another, however, public opinion strongly disagreed, and henceforth, SCP-2901 began to appear at other future disaster events. This was the precursor of the precognitive scavenging animal-like behavior that is observed today. Efforts are to continue gradually introducing notions developed by the Foundation as to further SCP-2901's evolution into a more docile and manageable concept. Internal Counterintelligence only Foundation personnel with Level 4 clearance are permitted to view this document. For all intents and purposes, all other personnel are to be included in actively contributing to SCP-2901's perceptual evolution. It is pertinent that this document be limited to no more than 50 persons, including the O5 Council. And that concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening. If indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Alatreon, Zargaran, Professor Puffer, Retalius, JK, Signar, your local Foundation agent, Derivative, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate the Clown, Lost Boy, A Real American Hebrew, Sio Dio Demnatus, Eric Corbage, Longinus, Karim El Ashmoy, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulgan. Thank you.